Hope everybody's doing well out there. It's been a little bit since our last update, but thankfully that's because there has really been a decrease in the number of positive cases. Uh, there was a newly reported case in wild rabbits in California, as well as a couple of additional counties in Utah, but thankfully no new states uh, have been reported to have positive cases. Now, that being said, I certainly hope that things don't change. And one common question I've been having is, what potentially is leading to that slowdown? Is there the potential the virus is going away or are there other factors at play? And it's really a good question that I've thought a lot about and actually shared an interesting conversation with Dr. Ann Martin at the House Rabbit Society, where we looked at some of the research and some of the reports that came out of Australia. As I may have shared before, this disease was introduced to Australia some years back and it spread from one coast to the other coast in a little over 18 months. Now when you consider that Australia is only about 27% smaller than the United States, that is a large geographical area. But what they did see there was definitely some seasonality. The virus is less active in the summer months, slowly begins to pick up steam throughout the fall and the winter, and unfortunately becomes the most active in the spring months. That does fit some of the patterns that we're seeing in terms of positive cases here and the recent slowdown in the United States. Now, what are some other potential causes associated with that? Well, when you think about prey species, you think about predator species, when are they gonna be the most and least active? In the hot months where there's not much reason to go around, it's stressful, it takes a lot of energy, those animals tend to be less active. We also know that as ground temperature and ambient temperature comes up, this is a virus that is not as viable as temperature goes up and humidity fluctuates. There's also the potential of insect vectors and breeding behaviors and all those types of factors that when you think about the seasonality would make sense that we'll see less activity or less virus transmission in the summer months and then a slowly growing curve into the spring. Now we can certainly hope that that isn't the case, but if we use Australia as an example, that is certainly something that we have to be prepared for and we have to be aware of. So from the very beginning of this terrible situation, we have tried to be proactive in our communication with all of you. First and foremost, to keep you abreast of what information is out there, where positive cases are occurring, and certainly and most importantly, what are the steps that each of you can do to take every precaution possible to protect your animal? At the same time, we have been having in-depth conversations amongst our organization, trying to identify what are the things that we can do to keep you educated, but at the same time ensure that the products that you trust us in feeding your animals are as safe as is possible. This is about educating our growers that are out there, our network of hay growers, to be aware of this disease and to let us know if they're identifying any potential abnormal behaviors in rabbits that may be associated with their hay fields. Number two is putting in place a very specific hay quarantine process. To this date, we have not sourced any hay from a county with a positive affected case. Should that occur, any hay that we source from that county will be maintained at that location for three months post baling. Upon that three month time frame, we would then bring that hay to Oxbow to go to our routine multiple step hay quality evaluation process. Those are things that we're doing to ensure that the risk while already low is as low as is possible and that you can feel confident in feeding those products to your animals. We will also continue to monitor positive case data, looking at the USDA and other websites that report county by county data, whether that's in wild animals or in domestic animals, and we'll continue to participate on multiple task force and other organizations that are all working to share data to provide as much up-to-date information for all of you as we possibly can. If you have any questions about any of those programs or wanna know more about what Oxbow is doing to protect you and your animals, please don't hesitate to reach out to us.